It is time to finalize our bet slips for the division round by talking about some player props here across this weekend's four games. To do so, we're bringing back Tom Vecchio of Number Fire, getting his read on this week's games and where we can find value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here, as mentioned, by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore tom you can find his prop work and other betting recommendations over at numberfire.com you can also find him on the daily iso or nba dfs podcast tom divisional round cometh how are you doing today i'm doing great yeah this is one of the most exciting weekends in the nfl season last weekend was awesome i I think this weekend is going to be top uh going to top it uh there's plenty to get to there is a lot to get to we're going to talk about Players seeing role changes in the playoffs, yardage props, touchdown props. We'll talk other props as Tom uh, is one of the uh, the guys more willing to dabble into fun markets, I would say, as well. We'll talk about all that to get you set for the divisional round here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We have our divisional round full preview up with Ryan Williams. That went up on Thursday. I had my first look back on Tuesday. Both those on both the Covering the Spread podcast podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page. So subscribe to both those spots, uh, depending on how you want to consume the podcast. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NFL playoffs are here, and the easiest way to get in on the action is with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers, join today to get started with a $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. FanDuel has all your favorite bets, from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Make every moment more. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text to accept to 3342 in Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. And in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y And in Tennessee, call the red line at one 800 uh, I lost my spot. 889-9789. Flawless through then. Flubbed the last one. I'm embarrassed. Anyway, let's flip the flip the page for to talk about the divisional round. And Tom has mentioned in the playoffs, we can see things tighten up where we see teams conserve guys during the regular season. In the postseason, why bother? So when you were looking back at last week, and these could have been subtle, I think there were some subtle ones out there. Which players did you see their roles shift in ways that could make them either under or overvalued in the prop market for this week? Yeah, so this is always an interesting interesting thing. It's like, okay, it's just time to play their best players. No more messing around. Like, let's just get to We need to get these guys the ball. They, we need a win. So, And I think this is where we see, again, some very minor things. Uh, two of them come from Jacksonville. And I one of which would be Travis Etienne seeing 20 carries and not a single other running back seeing a single carry. 20 carries when they were down 27 nothing at right. one point so, during the game. <laughs> and it's kind of like, and everyone's like, okay, why would they give someone else? Like, they, they obviously had to win that game, huge comeback, all these things, but it's just like not even a single other running back saw a single, you know, carry out of the backfield. Yeah. So that's how he was obviously very effective with those 20 carries going for over 100 yards. His prop this week is at 69 and a half rushing yards. I think that's pretty high, right? I just don't see a game environment, especially if they're trailing, which they're expected to be, that he's going to be able to get there. So that's one thing I took note of. Two, also with Jacksonville, is that they have three receivers, all with 11 receptions or more, right? Or was there 11, or all 11 targets or more, excuse me. Yeah. Right, targets or more. And that's, we have to use that in context. They were trailing, they had to pass, but that's still like really, really heavy usage for these three players. 
uh, which would be Jones, Kirk, and uh, tight end. His name is slipping me right now. Evan Ingram. Yep. Right. So, uh, which is obviously we have to take that in context. They, they had to pass. The, so we have to use that. That's Those are two notes from Jacksonville. From San Fran, uh, George Kittle only had two targets. Very modest production from him. Obviously, they, they're moving the ball around a lot. Uh, Brandon Ayuk this week, I also will say – he was really effective last week, 73 yards on only three receptions. And this week, his reception prop is at 55 yards, and Debo Samuels is at 56. And that just doesn't seem – like, Ayuk seems just like a touch too high to me. Yeah. That's just my take on it. And partly because I think that they, like, they, they tried to get Debo the ball, and – Frankly, um, I, I want a Debo rushing plus receiving is it, probably five and a half. It's up. I just and checked. And that's my favorite. Yeah. Because they're, they're, like, they're trying to get him the ball, whether it's traditional passing routes or it's jet sweeps or rushes or bubble screens or like whatever it is. They're like, they're, they're getting him the ball. And I don't think I use going to be that effective on a per catch basis. So uh, San Fran and Jacksonville were two teams. I'm like, these things – or just a hair off. And Jacksonville, obviously, we need that context with them playing from behind. Yeah. With the uh, 49ers pass catchers, I looked for a long time at the Kittle under 46 and a half. I couldn't quite get there because it meant that I'm sweating 60 minutes, George Kittle, not, you know, slitting my throat, basically. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't really feel like sweating that. But, like, I'm probably going to take it. Um, I just think that is a bit ha- high. So you wound up on Ayuk. I, I wound up on Kittle. I think that... The overall takeaway being that they funneled things to McCaffrey, to Debo, and I would not expect that to change. Like those still guys, those two guys would be effective still, but they're pretty high. Those right. numbers are pretty high given how rush heavy they could be potentially. Right. Now we also get the Eagles and the Chiefs back this week. And the Eagles and the Chiefs are teams we have not seen yet in the postseason, but they've got some interesting guys. You know, they've got Miles Sanders, they've got um, they've got the backfield for the Chiefs as well. They've got Kadarius Tony. Talking about role shifts, are there any guys on those two teams you expect to see role changes this week coming up? Uh, that's the that's one of the interesting notes, and I think the role change for the Eagles could be dependent on, and I want your take on this, some of the notes or quotes around Jalen Hurts and his shoulder that it's like, is it still an issue? Yeah. How much is it bothering him? Because uh, when I was talking with Ben Stevens yesterday on, on Sirius XM, we spoke about this, and – you know, one of, that's that's one thing. It's like obviously they're not going to be telling the full truth of like regardless is it actually hurting him? So is it an impact? Is it like actually impacting him? Because if it is, it means two things: a, they're probably not throwing the ball as far downfield to AJ Brown and to Devontae Smith, which means uh, I think Dallas Goddard is in for a big week, and we're going to see more rushing from Miles Sanders. So the shoulder health of Jalen Hurts will be a role change for two different things: less passing for Brown and Smith. I think more shorter passes for Goddard, but also more runs for Miles Sanders. I think he's healthy. Um, Based on timelines I've seen of that injury, it seems like he's probably good to go. He came back to practice before week 17. So he's been practicing for week 17, 18, by week this week, four weeks of practice and five or six weeks since the actual injury occurred. I am operating as if he is full hurts. The one thing that I would say with regards to their usage that does change is I'm not sure if Lane Johnson is full Lane Johnson, like he's practicing in full, but I don't think he's like, that's a serious injury. That's probably going to require surgery after the year. So I think that if you were to make any tweaks to the Eagles, I would have a slight overall offensive efficiency downgrade with the assumption that Lane Johnson is not a hundred percent Lane Johnson right now. Right. And I think that's, it's, Obviously, it's it impacts things in multiple ways. It's not just the quarterback because if if Hertz was fully healthy, if their line's not fully healthy, like if Hertz never got injured at any point in the season, if their right. line still isn't fully healthy, we still have to take that into account. So that's obviously right. huge um, for the Chiefs. You know, their backfield is a spot that I've never enjoyed looking at <laughs> from a fantasy perspective, from a betting perspective, because it's like, hey, who's going to have the hot hand this week? Yeah, who's going to be catching passes out of the backfield? We don't know. So ultimately. I like some unders for those players. Uh, I like Pacheco under rushing attempts specifically, just because I do not see 
him getting the volume. I don't see anyone particularly getting a whole lot of volume. Jarek McKinnon, maybe in the passing game, that's a different story. But I just have a tough time going to that backfield and saying, I love this spot. I can't wait to go here for this player. I think the one spot I look to there is actually also an under, uh, but with McKinnon under rushing yards, because he doesn't run the ball very right. much. Um, his rushing yardage prop is 25 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, I'm tossing at week 18. Week 18 doesn't matter um, because they use Ronald Jones there. That doesn't matter. So scr- scrubbing that out, uh, his rushing totals have been 4, 7, 52 over, 22 under, 51 over, 0, and then uh, 24 against the Jags. He's gone over it twice in what I would deem, or 20, sorry, 2 against the Jags. He's gone over it twice in what I would deem to be his most relevant sample. The under uh, is minus 114. So I feel like that one is the one I would turn to most in terms of dissecting that backfield. I don't think we'll see a big shift in the way they play things. I think we're just going to see kind of, you know, siloed with Pacheco getting more of the, the, uh, the rushing work, McKinnon getting the occasional third and long carry, whatever it may be. I think that that one is the one that stands out most to me. Right. And as long as we have defined roles for those players, I think that's what make that's what can make it easy. Right. But when they're all over the place, you know, Andy Reid, he likes to be creative and, and credit to oh, yeah. him. I mean, it's obviously successful. <laughs> they're getting players the ball in different circumstances and they're putting up yards and points. But it, that can make it difficult, difficult as long as like it's OK, only McKinnon in the, the passing game. That's just like, OK, rushing unders for him. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think, you know, rushing attempts because ultimately my feeling is for if, if this game stays close, they're not going to be running the ball. They're just going to put it in Mahomes' hands like they can't. I I can't be rushing the ball. Right. Uh, I'd agree with that for sure. Okay. Let's open up and talk about some yardage props. So you see over FanDuel Sportsbook, Tom, where are you seeing value in that department? Uh, One of them would be Dallas Goddard over 51 and a half receiving yards. Um, It it goes along the lines of what we're going to be seeing from the Eagles. Last week, the the Giants got torched by TJ Hawkinson, 10 and 129. Uh, Throughout the course of the entire season, the Giants allowed 922 receiving yards specifically to tight ends which was the 10th worst in the league. So if we use A, the matchup, and then B, the the health, the, the coach speak, all these things, it's like, okay, line isn't great, which means he could be under pressure more. Is Hurts fully healthy? So if he's not fully healthy and the line's not fully healthy, they're not going to be having the time to throw the ball downfield, which means Goddard will be able to be successful in the middle of the field, which is already an easy matchup. Yeah, uh, so, 51 and a half, the number for Goddard there uh, in that game. Uh, and that's like not bad. Uh, 51 and a half uh, minus 114 on the over there. Devontae Smith, 65 and a half. I couldn't touch that. Right. Um, the usage he has had in games with Goddard, Hurts and Brown healthy is he's been very efficient, which is good because he's a very good football player. But the use hasn't been there. I think same thing with A.J. Brown, 72 and a half. Not the point where I'm taking unders. But if I were forced taking over, I think that Goddard would be the one guy whose number I could best justify to myself. Yeah, I wouldn't. For me, it's, you know, A.J. Brown, if they do get long passes off, that that can be happening in two receptions, realistically. Right. 30, 30 plus yards down the Honestly, field. Honestly, one for him. Right, you know? right. Uh, you know, he's on my he's on my main dynasty team, and, you know, I get the updates from from Sleeper. Uh, yeah. That's like, oh, big play to A.J. Brown for 30. Again. Yards. Yeah, again. So, like, that could happen in two. So, I could rationalize going to the over, but ultimately I don't think this is the, my favorite spot for yeah. Goddard. All things considered, I think it has that has this like a uh, Venn diagram of like where I realistically see production going combined with the game environment combined with the health. It's like all overlapping to Goddard to this weekend. It is kind of buying low on Goddard too, because we haven't seen him healthy with hurts for outside of week 18. He was healthy there. Hurts yeah. healthy there, but like, bit of a different setup. Uh, we haven't seen him fully healthy in a while, and he had a lot of yardage juice when he was healthy earlier on this year. Any other yardage props stand out to you? Yeah, two running backs and two unders. Devin Singletary under 43 and a half rushing yards. Ezekiel Elliott under 35 and a half rushing yards. And these are just, I think, very, very straightforward. Singletary isn't seeing the lion's share of the work. Cook is getting involved. This game stays close to the high over under. It's the same situation. Uh, as I mentioned with, with Mahomes, they're not the Bills are not gonna be running the ball. They're gonna put the ball in Josh Allen's hands, and that's what's gonna happen. They're not gonna be pounding the ball. I just I just don't see that happening. And then Zeke is 
A, it's an extremely difficult matchup going up against the 49ers, allowed the fewest rushing yards to running backs this season. B, I do not see them playing from ahead where they're going to be in a spot to run the ball. And C, he has been so far from effective this year in anything on, on a touch per touch basis that we're looking at like 2.9 yards per attempt or whatever it is last week. And he's just not effective. And Tony Pollard is ultimately the best running back that the Cowboys have. So it, this could be a regular season matchup for Zeke. And he could be, you know, seeing plenty of usage. I still wouldn't like going to him in the over because the match was just so, so bad. Right. And then you factor in the fact that they <laughs> gave Pollard his highest snap rate of the year in a game with Zeke active last week. Factor in that the 49ers especially effective up the gut, which is where Zeke gets a higher rushing share than he typically gets. Um, there are a lot of factors that do align to make, I think, both Zeke unattractive, but also make Pollard pretty attractive. Going back to the Singletary one, though, I was hoping to like use FanDuel Sportsbook as like a guide for how I should feel about Cook and Singletary for Daily Fantasy. Opened up the rushing plus receiving prop. Uh, they are two yards apart, so not helpful. Um, I was hoping the market would allow me to decide where to go with that. It didn't. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, I was hoping for a better read from all of you based on that, but couldn't quite get there. I think that Singletary will probably play a lot of snaps, but that hasn't right. led to anything for him. So his like yardage per snap number would be absolutely disgusting. Okay. Touchdown bets. What you got there? Uh, sticking with Dallas Goddard plus plus one ninety five. Uh, I think it just makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, all those things I mentioned with him, uh, we expect the Eagles to be scoring, you know, injury situation, as I mentioned with the, the hurts and his shoulder, blah, blah, blah. Great matchup against the, the giants who are specifically weak against tight ends. I think that's gotta be number one for me. Number two, I think is a long shot and I, I kind of have talked myself into it over the, okay. and, and I, I think it's a bit of a long shot. I think the 49ers defense for a oh. touchdown is very much on the table this week. And, you know, it comes down to Dak not being consistently safe with the ball. And last week, sure, you know, great performance from him, but the Buccaneers defense is not the 49ers defense. We have seen tremendous things from the 49ers defense this year. And if they're going to be playing from ahead, the 49ers, that is, that means the Cowboys are going to have to pass the ball, which means the league leader in interceptions this year is going to be throwing against one of, if not the best defense in the league. Yeah. So 49ers defense at plus 650, I think is in play this week. Yeah. I like that. Um, and with Dax interceptions, I don't mind them personally because a lot of them have been aggression and I wanted Dak to be more aggressive coming into the year. So I don't think it's like a bad thing for him, but it does lead to more chances for touchdowns um, on the defensive side of the football. And they've got like these like psycho athletes on defense. So if they were to even like a fumble recover recovery, stuff like that's very in play. So plus 650, that's not bad. That's not bad for a, a prop like that, given the, you know, that Dak is taking risks, which can lead to tie upside events like this. Yeah. I, I don't like, I don't really care much about interceptions, whether it's from like a fantasy yeah. perspective or anything. It's just like, it just creates more uh, you know, like variability and more, and like, it just changes the game environment, which is actually conducive for fantasy production because then if they're behind, then they have to pass the ball. Right. So I don't really care about interceptions. We just have to use that as like, okay, it's an event that could happen. And how do we capitalize off of that? And like, right. what are the outcomes? The outcomes are a touch, uh, you know, touchdown return right. from the 49ers. So right. whether Dak is ineffective or not is kind of regardless of this situation. It's just more about, okay, he does take risks. They are going to be playing from behind. They do have a very good defense. What does that lead to? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you about, we've been talking a lot about Hertz and his health. Seems like you're kind of working on the assumption that he's still working his way back. His rushing yardage prop is 51 and a half. That's really high. Right. Um, justifiably, given the way he's operated this year. Do you think there is value in the under there, or are you trying to get exposure to it via other routes that could hit, even if Hertz is does wind up being healthy? So I like the under specifically, and I remember, what was it, the Thursday night game they played against the Houston, Houston, Te the yeah. Houston Texans. I was actually, I wrote about that under, and I think... It's largely, yeah, and I think it was largely the same thing. I think it's probably like 39 or something around that game. Uh, I'd have to double check the article to see, but ultimately, and everybody, and I remember seeing other people, 
you know, talking about his, his rushing. Oh, Houston, they're, they're terrible against the rush. Houston allows all these rushing yards. Uh, Hertz is in a great spot. He's averaging X amount of yards, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing, though. If you look back at the game logs for Hertz, games that he has high rushing totals, he also has high passing attempts, which means what? Which means that they're, they're in a close game where yeah. he has to drop back. Thus, he can scramble and pick up yards, not that he doesn't have designed plays. Because if they're playing from ahead as they were in the Houston game, he doesn't have to drop back. So that means he's not under pressure and not like not having chances to scramble where he just naturally picks up yards. Right. So if they're playing from ahead, they're just going to give the ball to Sanders. Mm -hmm. And then the times that he does have to drop back, they're probably pretty safe passing options because they're leading and they can kind of control things. So I think his rushing yards are good in games that have high over-unders and close spreads, mm -hmm. not a game where they're expected to be leading. Like they were like 13 point favorites against Houston or whatever it was. Right. And that's just not a game where he needs to drop back 40 times. Right. So I actually really do like the under And If we take this little health note in consideration, are they going to have too many design running plays for him where they expose him to getting hit and landed on or whatever it is. Right. And that, that game against the giants, when he came back, you know, they were trying to conserve things, but there was only one design rush in that game for him. Um, it was nine carries overall uh, for 13 yards, but um, they were conservative. I'm curious if that carries over into this week, because I don't know. Um, but the, there are a lot of correlated ways to play things there if you make the assumption he's maybe not 100% hurts right now. What about other props you see? I know you're a big into like passing attempt props yes. and stuff like that. So what are you seeing elsewhere at FanDuel Sportbook this week? So... Passing props or passing attempts props, as you mentioned, is one of my favorite. And I think these are really, really easy to project. We can look at game environment, uh, you know, game script, passing tendencies, uh, you know, teams, play calling tendencies, all these things. I think these are probably one of the softer markets. Um, I mean, Brady had, what was it, 60 some odd passing attempts, 66, right? 64, whatever it was. It was the yeah. Yeah. So Josh Allen's passing prop right now is 35 and a half. It's minus 144 on the over. So I do not love, I love the number at 35 and a half for right. Josh Allen. I, I don't love minus 144. I prefer if it actually went up to 36 and a half. Mm -hmm. So if it moves between now and, and uh, the game time, yeah, this is actually a spot. If it goes to 36 and a half, I still have a ton of interest in, because if you look back at this game log for Josh Allen, we're seeing very, and, and the game log at face value, doesn't tell the whole story where the game against Miami, a lot of back and forth action over 300 yards, 39 passing attempts, new England game. Doesn't tell the story game against Chicago also doesn't tell the story. And the game against the jets, these recent games to end the season don't tell the story of him like needing to pass the ball. These are very run heavy games, mm -hmm. uh, you know, different defenses, et cetera, et cetera. I think the Bengals are exploitable via the passing game. We're also expecting very high over under and, you're not getting to uh 50 some odd over under if Josh Allen has 30 passing attempts. Right. So I love the prop at 35 and a half. Don't love minus 144. If yeah. you can find it around the industry somewhere else, I'd still be willing to go to if it was 36 and a half, minus 114, minus 110, whatever it might be. Yeah. I also think we could see that one potentially shift uh, because there is some potential snow in the forecast and the wind is low. I care more about wind than snow. Right. But the market cares a lot about snow. Um, if we see that come down, Allen's played in adverse conditions a lot, and they're willing to throw him in that situation. Like in the Dolphins game, the one that yeah. was like super cold. I know it didn't snow to the end, but like their early down first half pass rate was like ninety percent. It wasn't. It was close. It was like very high. So they'll attempts. throw in weird conditions, right? So I'm not. Yeah, like I think wind is a factor. Yeah precipitation I, I, again not too much of an unless issue, it's but, extreme yeah unless it, unless yeah. we're talking about extreme but a little bit of wind is not going to be an issue so yeah. over josh allen passing attempts depending on the number and depending on where you can find the juice i think is uh the spot there to go also if you're following the game scripts i think trevor lawrence passing attempts is also at least interesting i could talk myself into the passing yards at only 250 again if they're playing from behind and they need to push the ball 37 and a half seems a little bit high, right? And last week's game, again, we have to use the context of the fact that they're playing from behind for nearly the entire game that he had to push towards close to 50. But I, I can talk myself into the passing yards, maybe not the passing attempts. Right. 
Uh, 250 and a half is the number on the passing yards for uh, Trevor Lawrence, and the over is minus 114 both ways on that one. Mahomes is 310.5, which is great. Love that. Um, <laughs> I love that team. They're so fun. Actually, I love both these teams. Who am I talking about? But like, could be behind. Um, you can throw on the Chiefs. I think they're a bit better than maybe perception is. Uh, but the part of the reason they're better is because Chris Jones is an animal and sacks don't really matter as much for a passing yardage number. So I think that the the logic is there for sure on Lawrence. The two passing props you like, uh, Allen, if we get that to 36 and a half, around minus 114, you want the over there. And then Lawrence over 250 and a half passing yards in that game against the Chiefs. Any right. final thoughts for you, Tom, before we wrap up here for the divisional round? Um, no, you know, I, I would lean towards, I would say chiefs giants don't know about the Bengals, the bills and the 49ers would be my, my picks. Okay. Uh, at least for, you know, for covering, I, I think the Eagles win. I think the giants cover, I think the 49ers win and cover, obviously. Um, I think we're in for a great weekend. I probably side with the under in all of the games, except for Bengals bills. It's the one game where I have an under. <laughs> okay. It was a 50 and a half, though, in my defense. Okay. And it, it was also me. when the wind was higher. It was 14 miles per hour and I took it, and it's not. So I feel like a dummy. And it went down to 48 and a half like, after I took it, and it's been slowly creeping back up. And I'm like, oh, man. Do I have to regret this? Rooting against Josh Allen and Joe Burrow on a Sunday? Ruining my whole day? But we'll see how things go there. That is Tom Vecchio. Tom, I uh, want to thank you once again for swinging by for today. Thank you for spreading your knowledge. Good luck to you with NBA NHL for tonight and with NFL this weekend. We'll talk to you once again soon. Yep. Thanks for having me. Check out Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Find all of his work at numberfire.com and on the Numberfire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Good luck to all of you this weekend. We'll talk to you all once again next week. Our first look at the conference championships coming up on Monday. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 